This is not an independent module and it is just a continuation of our proof on term by term differentiation for power series function. Let's continue with the proof. Now uh, recall that that's the theorem, that's the fact about the differentiation of uh, power series functions that we want to prove. Okay, so we want to show that if this is power series function, then for every uh, z in the domain or uh, uh, within the disk of convergence of this power series function, this function is infinitely differentiable. And in fact, in the second part, we can calculate what is the kth derivative of this power series function. And in the third part, we can calculate the values of these uh, cn's. Okay, uh, now recall that how did we start the proof? So we started from the second part of the theorem. Okay, so we try to prove uh, that this statement holds for any k. And uh, in this case, we also have further subdivision. In the first step, we try to prove that the statement is true for k is equal to 1. And using induction, we can then prove that the statement holds for any k. And uh, we are still uh, at this step for k is equal to 1. And we will continue uh, our discussion for this k is equal to 1. Let's recall uh, some basic uh, terminologies that we introduced uh, to prove the case k is equal to 1. So we defined this g of z to be equal to this expression and defined it. Uh, we defined it because uh, this is uh, if function is differentiable, then this is going to be uh, the derivative of this function f of z. And we also splitted our f of z into two parts this sj of z and then rj of z. So this is basically the first j plus 1 terms and this rj the rest of the terms. So we can say that sj is simply the j plus first partial sum of the series f of z. Now we want to prove that the derivative of f at z0 where z0 is any point in the domain is equal to g of z0. By using the definition of the derivative we want to show that this limit value is equal to g of z0. And then using the definition of the limit we want to show that for a fixed for, for an arbitrary epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta which is a function of epsilon such that this expression is less than epsilon whenever z minus z0 modulus is less than delta. And of course, we are not allowed to go outside the domain of the function. In, in other words, z always belongs to this disk. Okay, So, uh, we are trying to prove that this modulus is less than epsilon. Okay, we are using uh, the split, uh, the split thing that we defined for f of z, f of z is equal to sg of z plus rg of z. And uh, using that, we can write down this expression in the following form. So we have three terms and in our previous discussion, we proved that this thing is less than epsilon by 3 for all j greater than or equal to n1. Now we are going to focus on the c part and the b part. Okay, so that's where we have proved so far. Now let's focus on the C modulus of C. So this is equal to S J prime Z naught minus G of Z naught. Okay. Now uh, given what is G of Z naught? G of uh, G of Z is basically n is equal to one to infinity, and S J of Z is a polynomial which is basically the first J plus one terms of f of Z. Okay. And since S J of Z is a polynomial, so its derivative can be obtained by uh, taking the derivative of each and every term okay and over here you can notice that we, we are starting from n is equal to 1 because the first term is basically a constant okay now this implies because if this g approaches to infinity then this is just the definition of g of z so that's why we can say that when g approaches to infinity this s j prime of z is nothing but g of z okay and of course this implies that because this z is any point in the domain and z0 is particular point in the domain. So that's why j approaches to infinity. sj prime of z0 is equal to g of z0. Now what does this uh, limit implies? Using the definition of the limit, this implies that the distance between sj prime and g uh, is as close as we want. Okay, so is as small as we want. In other words, we can say that uh, there exists an n or n2 such that uh, this sequence okay so basically it's a sequence okay so s uh, j s j plus 1 
up to so on so this is a sequence z0 is a fixed complex number so this is a sequence which is converging to this g of z0 so we can say that there exists an in positive integer n2 such that this expression is less than epsilon by 3 when j is sufficiently large in other words when j is greater than or equal to n2 okay so this proves that this part modulus of c is less than epsilon by 3 so so far we have proved that this modulus of d is less than epsilon by 3 and this modulus of c is now proved to be less than epsilon by 3 now over here we impose the condition that j must be greater than or equal to n2 and in this d part we impose the condition on j that this must be greater than or equal to n1 so that's uh, there are two conditions uh, coming from the c part and the d part uh, on j okay and in the b part we will get some condition on z and under all these conditions this expression is going to be less than epsilon now moving on to the b part so this is a relatively simple part because sj is a polynomial and we know that polynomials are always uh, differentiable so that's why uh, if we use the definition of uh, uh, the derivative then we get the following thing okay so we get that this expression must be less than epsilon by 3 uh, and for some delta such that whenever z belongs to this disk okay and which is the domain of the function and whenever the distance between z and z naught is less than delta okay so we are just using the definition of the derivative this expression so according to the definition of the derivative this expression when when we take the limit z approaches to z naught must approach to its derivative which is s j prime z naught okay so just using the definition of the derivative we proved that this s j this expression is less than epsilon by 3 okay so of course uh, we also imposed the condition on j and uh, this b part imposed the condition on z okay that uh, z belongs to the domain that is uh, the most important condition and okay and the distance between z and z naught is less than delta so we have three conditions one on z and the two conditions on j under all these conditions now we can say that this is less than epsilon by 3 this is less than epsilon by 3 and this uh, b is less than epsilon by 3 and under all these conditions we can say that this is less than epsilon okay because this is less than epsilon by 3 this is less than epsilon by 3 and this is less than epsilon by 3 so their sum uh, is equal to epsilon so that's why this expression is less than epsilon whenever j is greater than or equal to the maximum of n1 n2 and whenever z belongs to this small disk with radius delta and center z naught and of course it must be contained in the definition uh, in the domain of definition of this function f of z so we prove that this expression is less than epsilon what does this imply so this implies that the function the first derivative of the function exists and it is equal to g of z naught where z naught is any point of the domain now if we want to prove if we want to go on if we want to prove this statement for any k then for example if we want to show it for k is equal to 2 then we take the following function instead of taking f of z we take this f prime of z or the first derivative of f of z and instead of taking gz that we considered for the case of k is equal to 1 we consider g of z in this case to be this expression and uh, using uh, these two definitions of f prime and g of z we can follow the same steps and we can prove that the statement holds for k is equal to 2 okay and moving on we can easily show that basically it is uh, true for any k in other words if we assume that this is true for uh, uh, k is equal to let's say n then we can or k is equal to let's say m because it will confuse with this n so let's say the statement is true for k is equal to m then we can easily show that uh, the statement holds for k is equal to m plus 1 okay so uh, the next steps are left as an exercise so the statement now holds that the kth derivative of the function is given in the following form 
and uh, if we want to prove the third part which is relatively simple now if we want to find the value of ck just put z is equal to f in the definition of the kth derivative of f of z now using z is equal to alpha in this expression which is given over here we can easily prove that this ck is basically equal to uh, the kth derivative of f evaluated at alpha divided by k factorial now if function is differentiable for any k we can say that the function is infinitely differentiable for all z in the domain of this uh, uh, of the domain of definition of this function now in this part we prove this important result that when the derivative of a power series function exists and how to actually find it in the next part we will use uh, this result to find new functions and to see how to differentiate or how differentiation helps us in understanding and finding new complex valued functions